Now to our first discussion. Boris Johnson's comments about veil-wearing Muslims has kicked up an almighty storm this week. He's against bang the burqa, but his description of women covering their faces as looking like letterboxes and bank robbers has dominated the headlines. Well, some have defended Johnson's right to uh, open a valid debate and the importance of free speech. Uh, but there's been widespread criticism. Muslim Tory peer Lord Sheikh accused the former Foreign Secretary of inflaming Islamophobia and encouraging bigotry. So our question, is Islamophobia on the rise? Joining us now to give us their views, the author of Love in a Headscarf, Shalina Jam Mohammed, writer and columnist Owen Jones, Dr. Taj Hage, Imam and founder of the Open Mosque, and the columnist and broadcaster Carol Malone. Well, Carol, uh, th these types of terms, uh, letterboxes, uh, bank robbers, it's going to inflame tensions, isn't it? I mean, today Boris has been uh, accused of, well, of fueling fascism. Yeah, it was, it was a stupid thing to say. How He's not the first person to refer to women wearing the full burqa as letterboxes. We know that someone, uh, we know that, that uh, uh, Labour Party ministers have said it too. Um, and I just, I think the language was stupid, but I think what it's done, it, it's made it the wrong kind of debate. The debate, sh the debate should have been about the suppression and oppression of some Muslim women. Instead of, instead of the MPs this week, virtue signalling about Boris, which, which, should be, <coughs> which was never about religion. It's all about getting rid of Boris because he's probably the only person currently who's going to be able to unseat Theresa May. So this so, is... So he was planning that... Well, I don't, he's been planned before, but what they want to do is get rid of Boris before he can actually do that. So I think this is not, I think for those MPs who have been screaming this week, and Theresa May, you know, instead of, instead of screaming that Boris should apologise and about the words he used, they should be talking about the problems and the, and, and the suppression faced by Muslim, some Muslim women in this country. Shalina, is it oppression? Well, I've been writing about this issue for 15 years and during that time very little has changed actually. So if we want to have a debate about the burqa, let's have a debate mm -hmm. because actually there's a lot of assumptions, for example, in what Carol's just said about, you know, what do Muslim women feel? How do they behave? You know, are they suppressed? Are they oppressed? You do you know, think some of them well, are? Well, what we need to do is people are making assumptions. Actually, let's have a study about it. I'll lead it. You know, in France there's 367 women who wear the burqa. I don't think there's, you know, more than a couple of thousand in the UK. There's no numbers. So, you know, I'll go and interview them personally myself, but actually... We're not, myself, but actually, we're not let, this is not fair let, to let say... Shalina, let Shalina well, finish. Well, the important voices here are the voices of the Muslim women themselves, and they should be telling and us where how they, they feel about it. And when we have um, a leading figure, a member of parliament, who is using his platform, who has ambitions to run our country, then it's not just about the words he uses, it's the fact that there is a context. This is a far-right meme, the letterbox, that has been amplified by somebody whose job it is to bring us all together. Mm. But actually, what I want to say is that, in a way, this is not about the burqa. This is not about what he said. This is actually about the fact that we have now come to a time where it's OK to hate on a minority and use comments that have specifically, yeah. specifically led to women being abused on the streets. There is a case yeah. of a woman in a doctor's surgery who has had envelopes stuffed into her mouth, a mother who has gone on a bus and been refused to get on, a woman who has walked down the street and been urinated so should Boris, on. So should Boris apologise? Well, and will, if, will that make a difference if to there you? Is, um, if there is a possibility of Boris Johnson doing <coughs> something genuinely, then I would like him to genuinely give a platform to these women to express their voices and understand what it is like today to be a minority in this country who does not feel safe okay. to walk down uh, the street. Owen, oh, uh, Shalina referred to it as a far-right meme. Uh, comedian Rowan Atkinson wrote in The Times this week, all jokes about religion cause offence, so it's pointless apologising for them. Are, are we quicker to comment uh, when, when people talk about Islam? Do, do Christians get a kicking in the media, but, but oh, you know, we need to be really sensitive about Muslims? Um, well, I mean, firstly, Boris Johnson's a guy who's got a long history of talking uh, in derogatory terms about minorities. He called gay people bum boys. Uh, yeah, he I said, mean, let's remember this is a Sunday morning show. Well, we don't want to get into uh, this. Is the, uh, no, we need context about how what we're dealing with here. He's somebody who says if we're going to have equal marriage, then why not have t three men marrying a dog? Uh, he's talked about black people as picking innies with watermelon smiles. He has a history of talking about minorities in this way. The context, though, is about anti-Muslim hatred, which is soaring in this country. In London alone last year, anti-Muslim hate crimes went up by 
40%. We have a media which talks about Muslims in a derogatory way. So the Sun newspaper were forced to do a correction after their front page <coughs> newspaper said one in four Muslims have sympathies for ISIS, where the, the, the Times newspaper, our paper record, was similarly forced to do a correction after doing a false news story about Muslims. So the context is when you have somebody in a privileged position, like Boris Johnson, using terms which if you said in a workplace mm. to somebody who's wearing a niqab, you would quite rightly face discipline as, disciplinary, uh, you know, it would be seen as bullying, it would be seen as bigotry. Uh, that in the context where Muslims in this country are widely facing bigotry at the hands of politicians, the media, but in the streets, in the workplace, that legitimises those who hate Muslims, which is why is we're seeing the increase in hate crimes. Owen, isn't the point here not what he said, but that he can't say it and we can't have a discussion I about know, it, we always, it's shut down? You know, when people that, and, and, say we can't say this, we can't say that about issues which we spend almost all our lives talking about, you know, they say this about immigration as well. Look, we've spent the last few years relentlessly talking about immigrants, refugees and Muslims instead of the people at the top of society who plunge this country into disaster like the bankers or the tax dodgers. Mm. But okay, when, well, when we we'll spend... Well, no, no, we spend all this time, about a few thousand women who wear uh, a niqab um, in this country. It, the, just quickly, the right to have freedom of speech does not mean you can say what you want without consequence. Otherwise, I could call Boris Johnson the D-word on national television. You couldn't even let me say what, how he described gay people without kicking off. Is that an attack on I freedom of speech? I kick off, but I just... Well, yeah, no, yeah. 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 Is that an attack on freedom of speech? No, you're saying that you're giving me a platform. I'm not necessarily entitled to this. You could kick me off uh, if you wish. That's yeah. not an attack on my freedom of speech. Right. You're saying that I have to use it responsibly. I, I won't kick you off here, don't worry. Uh, uh, Taj, uh, bu bullying and bigotry, it, is, is that what it is? Is that what, we, is that what Boris was doing? No, I think he was telling the truth. I mean, for example, I myself am on record that these, these tribal contraptions are ninja-like. I mean, for heaven's sake... Okay, we... I, mean, that, I mean, that's quite inflammatory stuff, yes, isn't and, it? But, but, but it's the truth. The, the point here is these women say it's an Islamic thing. Okay, you give them the Quran and ask them where is this verse that says you must cover your face. Do they tell anyone else that they are banned from covering their faces in Mecca, the holiest place in Islam? No, they don't tell them that. They say it's my Islamic right, it's my religious right for me to cover my face and for, to be publicly anonymous. And by the way, since he's talking about uh, human rights and freedom of speech and all so, and so forth, what about the fact that you know I myself and you as a man, we can't walk down the street with facially masked, but somehow women in this country can do that now. Now, either we have a law that says all people can mask themselves or no one. We yeah. can't have one or the other. Why are we having gender inequality towards men in this case? Okay, well, the argument is a choice. I mean, that, 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 no, they're, 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 choice. They're, they're, they're inflammatory, uh, no, but inflammatory, inflammatory statements. And I, and I, I want to bring in our next guest who will have certainly have something to say about it. Cherry. Thank you, Sean. Joining us now is Sahar al Faifi, who has been wearing the niqab since the age of 14. Sahar, thank you for joining us. How do you thank feel you about comments like this, comparing your appearance to a letterbox? Um, it's very sad to hear these comments. Uh, they are clearly Islamophobic and racist. And let's not forget that Boris Johnson is not um, a nightclub comedian. He is a, mem a member of the parliament. His comments will have the consequences on us, on our daily life. Mm. We are already being called a terrorist. We are already being called uh, bombers and, and uh, oppressed and suppressed and isolated and we can't even speak the language and all of this kind of stereotype and prejudices. And now we're going to be called letter boxes and bank robbers. And personally, after I did all the interviews in the last few days in response to Boris Johnson, and the social media feed is overwhelming, uh, is overwhelmingly yeah. uh, negative and, and abusive. And that just, it tells you that there definitely will be a spike, an increase in Islamophobic abuse and his yes. comments does not help. Now, I agree that we have to protect uh, our freedom and our right of, uh, of um, freedom of speech, mm. but it doesn't mean freedom of hate and bigotry. As uh, Owen said, you know, freedom of speech comes with responsibility Absolutely. and, and it has to be measured. In your experience, is Islamophobia becoming more prevalent? Definitely, without a doubt. I mean, it's been really difficult in the last, you know, year and a half since Brexit already. You know, one of the examples, it was just last week in, in, in the area where I live, someone called me an ugly terrorist. Mm. You know, before that, in the hospital where I work, you know, people calling me go back to your effing country. And it's very sad because, you know, I'm from Wales. Wales is part of yes. me and, and, and I am part of Wales. Why and, do and, you and it's choose? very painful. Why do you choose to cover your face? Some people say it's a symbol of a Depression. 
That's that's really sad to hear. That is a symbol of oppression. You know, like we live in in Britain, everyone is free to express their faith and identity they, the way they want to. You know, if I wear a press, I will just take it off. And you know, the mm. fact that my mother and my sister don't wear it, it tells you that it's a choice. And for me, it's an Islamic practice, and that's why it's very important to you know protect uh, religion as one of the human rights protected yes. characteristic. You know, it's it is my interpretation of the Quranic text. So. Yes. I I disagree uh, with the imam that it does not say in the Quran. It does say in the Quran to lower down your garments, and garments has different interpretation. You know, with all due respect to the imam, I have memorized most of the Quran by heart, yes. and I can reference the chapters to him uh, clearly. So it is part of my faith. It is part of yes. my identity. Do, do you think and I want make... to resist all the stereotypes yes. and prejudices. Do you think people make assumptions about you by the way you dress? Yeah, definitely. I mean, as I said, they think that I'm uneducated and oppressed. And the truth that I'm geneticist by training, I worked in the NHS, and I'm not a letterbox by any mean. I'm, I'm a skydiver. <laughs> you skydive? <laughs> yes, I do. A skydive. <laughs> What's a heart? Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Sean, back to you. Well, really interesting points. You, you, I mean, Carol, you were shaking your head. Yes, I am shaking my head because, you know, the, it is a fact that there are, there are many women in this country who, are, ha, who have pressure put on on them, whether it be subliminal or overt, to wear the burqa. When, when girls as young as seven and ten years old are wearing the, the face, down, there is pressure put on them at home. I read a very moving a letter in one of, the, one of the national newspapers this week from a young Muslim woman who said, she doesn't want to wear the burqa. She said it scares her. And she says now is she not only having to fight her family and the Muslim community, she's having to fight, as she called them, well-meaning lefties, people like you, who she says are actually making her life even more difficult now. And she says if you normalise the wearing of the burqa, what you're, what you're, what you're normalising is, is politics that actually that d discriminate against women, that actually, that, that she, she actually says that, 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 that it discriminates, that it, it doesn't take into account LGBT, BT or women's right to be free from oppression. But, but, but okay. for Sahara, it's a choice. But, but an is educated it a choice? Woman. How do we know well, the pressure that wasn't put oh, on okay. her? Well, she, well people who let have been pressurised don't say such let, 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 let me respond. Okay, okay, let me respond to the, the claims that a face mask lady makes that is part of the Islam. That's okay? So With due respect, it is my entitlement to say that. Okay? There are only two verses in the Quran they like to quote. Chapter 24, verse 31, that talks about women covering the private parts and the bosom. Nothing about hair, hair nothing about okay. face. The other one, chapter 33, verse 59, okay. talks about the fact that, uh, uh, you know... I mean, we don't want to get into the Quran too much. Uh, everybody interprets it, it in a different way. And no, that, no, and that, no. That, it, it, not, the, the Quran is clear. It says it five things about itself, very, very briefly. It says it's clear and detailed. God has left out nothing in the book. It, it doesn't forget, doesn't make a mistake, and doesn't run out of words. If God wanted women to cover their faces, why didn't he say so clearly? Not subject to interpretation. Okay. It's Ch absolutely Chalina, fine. Let's not get into the Quran. Let's no, just no, get no, into the debate. In fact, debate. I think that's an important point. This is not a theological debate. I don't think the British government wants to be giving fatwas on what is and isn't on no, you know, Muslims can give that was. But um, the, what we need to, we can have this debate, but we can't say uh, in the way that Mr. Johnson has done, in which the, the, the debate is characterised, that on the one hand women are oppressed, on the other hand we can use language that makes fun of them. To make fun of somebody you have defined as a victim is called bullying. And what has become apparent in the last week is that it seems okay to bully people. We can talk about the burqa, we can listen to his voice. I thought it was great we actually got to hear somebody talking okay. about it. But well, we cannot make it acceptable acceptable in this society to abuse people and to talk about okay, them so in a way which leads to physical and um, forms of bigotry uh, and makes it not safe for people in the street. Uh, so if, I if he hadn't said letterbox and, uh, um, I've forgotten what the other thing it was, letterbox, bank bank robber. Robber. Bank bank robber. Robber. if those words weren't in his, his, his comment and in that article he wrote, would that have been fine for him to raise this debate? Do you know there's only one good thing that's come out of Mr Johnson's comments, which is it has become really apparent that we have minorities in this country which you can can say these things about and you can trigger violence and bigotry against and this is part of a rising wave this is one instance of all sorts of hatreds that are rising you know women should be paying attention but we have the alt-right male okay. you know people of color should be paying attention we have the rise of racism we have anti-semitism rising we have uh, hostility against the lgbtq 
community. It is not the violence is rising. The convictions are actually falling for rate race and the burqa. People should keep their eye on the fact that this is a larger rise and the burqa is just a Okay, okay. Let's just let Owen have a quick word. Anti-Muslim bigotry, anti-Muslim bigotry on the right because of Muslim behaviour. That's victim blaming. 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 It's none of my business what people wear. If we're going to get into a debate about what people wear, I'm going to be in all sorts of trouble. But the, the, the problem we're talking about here is inflammatory language. You pose yourself as a champion of women's rights. We just had an educated woman, a geneticist, on television speaking eloquently. And you called her, you you called her that face mask yeah. guest. But that's, yeah. that's, We've that's, that's stop, true. We've got to stop dehumanising people like this. If, if they we want to have, touch, 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 wanna have this debate, okay. let's have this debate. Well, let's hear from call people Let, letterboxes uh, Owen, and Owen, bank Owen, let's hear from Sahar now. She's okay. actually still on the line from Cardiff. And, and Sahar, you wanted to respond to, to, to some of the comments we've had here. Um, I agree it's not about theological debate. We have to not forget that the debate around the niqab is our, it's not a Muslim thing. It's about civil liberties. Everyone has the right to express themselves the way they want. If we're going to discuss the, the niqab today, is, does that mean that we're going to discuss the turban tomorrow, the LGBT rainbow afterward? You know, it's very risky to go into that. And let's not forget that the politicians use the face veil as a polarizing tool to divide us. There are definitely more important issues that need to be discussed. You know, let's talk about the NHS. Let's talk about Brexit debate. Let's talk about social care. Now, a piece of fabric that a woman chose to wear. Okay. So let's not fall into the trap yeah. of dog whistle politics. So, so how, uh, Taj is, is shaking his head. I mean, for example, I mean, this, this notion you know, that you have a right to cover your face. Where does it stay in, 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 the, in the UN Declaration of Human Rights public anonymity is allowed? In fact, the European Court of Human Rights has thrown out that argument that it's a human right to have facial uh, concealment. We're not talking about turbans. We're not talking about uh, crosses and all the, the other stuff. The, that, the that niqab is, is a religious faces. practice. We're talking Sahar, mainly Sahar, about Sahar hiding Sahar. faces. Sir? The niqab, the niqab is a religious practice. It's, it's one not. of the pro That's your interpretation of it. That's my interpretation, yes. and, and your interpretation is different. Let's agree to disagree. You know, but let's don't not call it superimpose. Islamic. Our views on each other. Let's be res no. For me, it's Quranic. You can't for me, it's provide, Islamic. provide the evidence. For you, it's not. Then it's fine. You know, I don't have a problem with disagreeing and criticism. You don't I have, have a any problem evidence, do you? with the language. No, I do have an evidence, but okay, it's not about theological we, we, debate. We, ha we haven't got time to, to, to go into into the Quran and exactly. your interpretation. There, there are things. So <laughs> Tell I'll, me th about thank it. you very much indeed. Uh, look, no Cherry, uh, this is going to ignite social media, isn't it? It really has. <laughs> So Abby says, education, education, education. It's not intolerance. It's a sign of ignorance. Muslims are peaceful and believe in peace. Paul says, Boris simply said what he felt. Most of us believe this style of dress is a potential threat. Mike says, nobody is attacking Muslims where I live, and I live in a diverse, multicultural community. And finally, James says, this is a sign that people of this country feel utterly marginalised, ignored and overlooked. Sean. Jerry, thanks. Uh, Carol, Islamophobia, I mean, attacks on um, people practicing the Islamic faith or, or look like they are practicing the Islamic faith uh, has risen. I mean, Owen, no, you said 40%. No, that's, it's, that's it's, it's 30 percent in attacks, one year. Attacks, incredibly let high. me say, attacks Still have not wrong. risen, not at all. What's happened is when, when you talk about Islamic incidents, Islamophobic incidents, we're talking mainly about, about 
about social media posts, about email posts. We're not talking about actual violence. There has been well, very little violence. In fact, let me, give, let me give you a figure. In 2017, race and religious attacks were reduced, the prosecutions for those things, reduced by 7.9%. The police giving stuff to the CPS to, to look at were reduced by 29%. So, so actual attacks, like what people, you know, the the, online there, are, just, there are some bad. very, very irresponsible, dubious organisations that peddle dubious stats about what is happening with Islamophobia. We're talking about, we're talking about mainly online posts, which no, many of them are not pleasant. Many of them are, no one should read, but, but we, ha we have nasty posts about all sorts of things on social media every day. And I think this is, I don't see, can I just finish? I don't see this country as a seething mass of Islamophobia. And I suspect the people of this country are really sick to death of being branded racist and Islamophobic when this country is more racially tolerant mm. than it has ever been in its history. OK, uh, Shalina, um, we haven't got long, so a short answer and a response to that. The definition of bigotry and hatred is what the victim believes it will be. That's what's in the law. And to tell Muslims that they are not experiencing being urinated on on the street. That is a very is, rare and health. terrible example, I agree, but it's very but we rare. Need to, we, one of the first things we need to do in this country is to accept that when Muslims say that they are suffering this bigotry and hatred is to believe Muslims. We believe women when, you know, this is what all Me Too was about, to believe when victims say that they are experiencing these things. Without question? And Without investigation? We, we take really? victims. Okay. We do not want to live in a nation where people have to be scared to go onto the street. You know, this is not the vision of our nation that people should walk down the street and be urinated on. And if that is the vision of our nation, we should be ashamed okay. of it and we need to take strong steps to address it. Uh, I mean, Owen, you're chomping the bit. We haven't got time for that, I'm afraid. You, you are a divided panel, but um, it was a very good discussion. Thank you very much indeed.